Hi, my name is Devin Satterfield. I'm here today with Juba Kalamka. How's it going, Juba? Not bad. I'm having a good time. So you, you have a group, Deep Dick Collective, uh -huh. and uh, like uh, you had to do some solo stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what's going on right now with your music? As Deep Dick Collective, we recorded about five records, three full lengths, wow. uh, and two uh, EPs. The last uh, full length on some other that'll be uh, coming out uh, probably in January. Um, and between that, uh, doing spot shows, uh, a lot more touring as solo artists, but mostly doing college shows and stuff as a group. Um, and the big thing that's happened the last couple of years is a documentary called Pick Up the Mic that Planet Janus Films did that's, uh, that premiered at Toronto Film Festival <clears throat> in September of 2005. Um, and it's basically like a 90 minute documentary that's chronicling uh, the experiences of artists in the queer hip hop. Uh, scene and documents a festival that I've curated since 2001 called Peace Out that actually started here in Oakland and the original festival will be in its seventh year in 2007 but it since has spawned uh, sister festivals Peace Out East in New York City, Peace Out UK in London, uh, Peace Out South in Atlanta uh, and there's a Chicago event and a Portland event that's being worked on as well as an LA event that people are working on. So, so that, that all started in Oakland like the, the, the and, festival. And, yeah, festival the, started, yeah, yeah, and, and now it's it's all over. Like, yeah. yeah, and and, and you were one of the, the first the founding people with that, or what was that? I mean, well, actually, I was the actually Tim M. West, one of my 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 mates in in, uh, in Deep Dick Collective was, uh, and Mr. Maker, uh, who lives in London, who runs GayHipHop.com, were the first guys who curated the first one, uh, in two thousand. In uh, 2001, sorry, 2001 was the first time that that happened. Uh, Pete King, who ran East Bay Pride, who now runs Pride Works in the Harrison Street Fair, approached me about that that first time, but I didn't actually have time to put it together, so they did a one-day event, and I helped with some of the promotion on it. But I kind of was the one who kept it uh, going and stayed involved with it over the last uh, couple of last couple of years, you know. So it's it's kind of inadvertently made me to go to. A person in a lot of ways about a lot of stuff that's going on um, in the community. Why, why did you move from Chicago to Oakland, and, and and why did you decide to kind of set up shop here? Like like what what what, what did you find appealing about this place, and, and and why do you continue to do stuff here? Well, my motivation, first motivation for moving from Chicago to Oakland was that I was doing a lot of uh, writing on sexuality and race, and being between Oakland and San Francisco with both of their respective political histories around sexuality and race, you know, with uh, queer history of San Francisco and the Panthers and uh, all kinds of the lefty stuff that was going on in, in the East Bay uh, made it seem like a place that made sense to, uh, to move. Uh, there was a lot more stuff I found out that was going on here that I really didn't, since I had never been here before I actually moved, uh, there was a lot more stuff that I found out that I was going to have access to. There was a growing arts uh, and existing, but also growing and developing in a lot of different interesting directions as far as an uh, arts community. And I've continued to stay just because, uh, as it stands now, I think that the Bay Area has kind of synthesized a lot of uh, the things about a lot of different places I've been, um, I've liked. And it's still, um, I wouldn't call it affordable, but it's like, you know, it's <laughs> it's more affordable. Oakland is more certainly more affordable than San Francisco. It's a good value. It's a good value. You get, yeah. yeah. Relative you get, to what you yeah. Re, I mean relative to what you're paying uh like you know paying to stay wherever you stay um in com combination with the weather and in combination with the access that you have to uh x number of major universities and different like weirdo or whatever, you know or arts communities. It's, it's a lot of stuff that you can kind of get into. If I realized when you got here, if you said you wanted to do something, uh, if you opened your mouth, that was someone who would, would help you do it. Right. Was, was something I realized right away. And I saw that happen over and over again. I said, I want to do this. And uh, people started, you know, helping me, right. you know, right away. So it was, it was and, and I didn't know anyone. I didn't know anyone here, you know, when I got here. And I've got to do a lot of things just by what hustling. What year was that? That was January first to ninety nine. Give me your thoughts on, on like like what's happening around here now, what what has happened in the past, and like all the whole mess that is the uh, the current. The current. What, what, what do you call this neighborhood? Like Northgate District or uh, Lower Uptown? I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah, they'll figure out. They'll figure out when they're trying to, when they finish yeah. when they finish condoing it out. They'll right. figure out. They'll it'll be. Yeah. 
they'll be calling it East San Francisco or some shit if they can get if they can get away with doing that. <laughs> they'll be they'll be the tr- trust. I, I don't think they would sell. I don't know, man. It'll be it'll be East San Fran Oak Town or something like that. Some bullshit like that or so they'll be calling Sponsored it. Sponsored by Viacom. Spon- yeah, you know, but it it'll but you know, uh, I just think it's I mean it's just interesting in term and for me in terms of uh, growing up in Chicago. And seeing some of the similar things happening there, like going back, because I still have a son that lives in Chicago. I'm a fam- media family that lives there. So seeing, being able to compare some of the things that are happening, but it's different because Oakland, uh, Chicago is a much larger, uh, larger city, and the way that the specific to the the neighborhood, like uh, off of the edge of downtown Oakland, the way that not just. Uh, 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 an African American community, but a mixed community of non-white people, has experienced, you know, what's been, you know, termed as a like a white hipster right. sort of entree uh, into the community. It's it's interesting. I mean, it's like, it's I mean, it's not a it's it's a process that happens, you know, in cities over and over again. Is that you know artists make it, you know, okay for you know for you know right. wealthy you know wasps to, to feel safe and and cool about moving into it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a neighborhood, and it's it's something that's happened over and uh, over and over again. But just to uh, to simplify that conversation in terms of just that this is being a black white thing in terms of, uh, uh, because if you there are more non white people here than just black people who are right. experiencing this, but also to that it doesn't it doesn't uh, allow for a conversation around class, you know, in the experience which because is real which is a real issue in the sense that there's a there's an overwhelming community of of of, of black people who live in Oakland who could give a good goddamn about what happens to this neighborhood because they're not a part of it and they don't live in it. And because they're middle class, up middle class, they don't care. And they don't have a reason, you know, to care. It's not something that they're invested in. Uh, at the same time, like, when I see people spraying on the sidewalk, you know, in front of cafes and, and in front of, like, little, uh, little, little craft shops and stuff, which people are holding open barely, you know, with right. with rent. I'm not saying it's not an issue. You know, around like you know that that you know 600 or whatever. You know, white hipsters can come and hang out and drink in the street, and that if black Steve people did the Job same thing, yeah. Oh yeah, well, that was, is that true? He bought some art at Esteban's gallery. Yeah. Oh it's wow, like forty grand. Oh damn. Uh, well, that's. But he wasn't spending anywhere else. Well, but well, that's that's called you know. Yeah. You know, that's I charges to the game. There, you know. Really got me. What you're saying is, is, it's really about class. It's a fundamental yeah. issue, mm-hmm. and um, and what we're seeing right now is like um, sort of the beginnings of, of almost like a like a not a class war, but a class clash for sure. Yeah. In, in this area, and like I don't know, just if you could talk a little more about that because we have a little more time. And, well, you know. it's just too that like I mean, if you talk about I mean, just for me personally, around my experience of, of African American experience, is that like I mean. I mean, how much, I mean, just the, the, I don't know if it's the quadrupling of the black middle class over the last 40 years, you know, and how, or something like that, I might be off, but I'm sure it's something like that, and just that the way, it's not the same, you know, it's just not the same experience that you had living in Oakland or New York or wherever in, in 1966 or 1965, it's just a different thing. Oh, Money, no, I wasn't, you okay, know, but, you know, say, my parents, no, I'm not, I'm close <laughs> to, I'm close, but, uh, but yeah, but you know, it's just, a, you know. It's just something that it's, it's just something that people I think are leaving out of the conversation. And two, uh, I think that's a problem with it in, in terms of when you see you know the, the sort of you know hipper than now, more you know more activists, more lefty than now cats that come through the neighborhood spraying on the sidewalk. I mean, the fact that the class is a part of that in a right. sense that like you can spray on the sidewalk on Twenty Third right. and Telegraph in a way that you can't in Jack London Square. Because you'll get arrested right. if you spray in front of a condo in Jack London Square. But ain't nobody saying that. But that's a part of the same thing that's happening. Those condos popping up down there. Why aren't you spraying down there? Why aren't yeah. you spraying in front of Jack's Fishery or whatever, or down there in front of Barnes & Noble? Right. So now, now's the time that uh, you, you plug all this stuff. The new Deep Collective album on some other. And my second solo record, Ooga Booga Under Fascism, will be out uh, on Sugar Truck Recordings, uh, my label. Be on the lookout, uh, pick up the mic. It's screening again on, on Logo Network. You can go to logoonline.com to find out about that. Deep Dick Collective and Juba Kalamka, myself, and pick up the mic and Sugar Truck are all on the evil. Uh, Hydra, that is my space that is slowly taking over our lives. This is Juba. I'm Devin. Thanks for hanging out on the roof.